Let's put a motor in the Lethal Camaro. Today's video is brought to you by CamaroCon. If you guys are interested in attending the West Coast's largest gathering of Camaros and Firebirds from all generations, hit up CamaroCon.com and learn more information about this show. What's going on guys? Ben over here at Lethal Garage and today we're putting that into that. A uh, little bit of work already done if you guys already saw the first video. Thanks to uh, Mike's overseeing help, Red Barn Racing. So as you can obviously see, the block made its way over from Red Barn over here. We got the crank, the pistons, rods, everything all torqued down on the bottom end. Again, we went with the ARP bolts on the bottom. So now basically we're gonna have a full built motor at this point. Uh, new heads, all the bolts down low. I guess I still have a stock crank. Meh. What do you, what, do you, do you say stock crank still means it's not full built? Oh, it's full, yeah. Whoa, that got real dark. Some blew it out. It's definitely not a stock bottom in outside stock, of the crank. Stock bottom in. So basically, if you just have a stock crank, does that mean you have a stock bottom in? Yeah, stock bottom in. Is that what all the SBE guys are uh, going for? Either or. Got a tray full of parts. Uh, I spent this morning cleaning out the engine bay. Got a lot of the dust and grime and build up all off. That used to be black. Now it's silver again. Uh, the white. Like it, it was just dirty in here. It's still pretty dirty, but I got a lot of the bad stuff off, so I'm feeling good about that. Um, I also removed the sway bar, more uh, weight savings. We don't need a sway bar where we're going. And I painted the, the front bumper. I, I didn't do a great job. I just did a quick spray job. Yeah, there's a drip. There's a, That's a run. Would you leave me alone? Anyways, so when the bumper's on, that will be black now instead of white. So I think that will look better. So. Make a progress. Now let's get this motor together. So Mike just hopped into the engine bay and he's now going to be my Fred Flintstone down the track. <laughs> uh, so we just pulled out the uh, circle D converter, put the brand new FTI converter, uh, Basically, Mike pulled it off, just a little bit of uh, fluid fell off, but, or fell out, leaked out. We got our Amsoil ATF bloop cap. If you guys need a trans oil, hit me up. Uh, but filled up the new one a little bit. Now Mike's cleaning it up after he slid it on, and a new converter is in. Motor-wise, we are at the point where we have timing chain in place with a new tensioner, so we got all new components for the front. All of it's brand new. Um, Lifters are in, fuel pump is on. Uh, we are at a little bit of a standstill, that's why we're doing the converter, because I decided to pull the trigger on a new oil pump. I figured, you know what, let's not risk it. Um, Paradise got me a good price on a brand new one, and a couple other parts that we needed. I'll go over that later, but as far as that goes, all of that will be new, oil pump will be new, but we're in a good spot, so lifters are in, uh, covers on fuel pumps uh, the big thing is is the spacing so if you guys didn't know aftermarket fuel pumps special specifically your direct inject pump uh, I'm running the LPE big bore it does have to be spaced properly if it's not spaced properly you will blow up your pump so make sure your mechanic knows what they're doing because there's a lot of shops out there blowing these things up because they don't know what they're doing update sorry i didn't do time lapse because we we're waiting on some parts so we got a new oil pump that came in we got the front cover all the bolts on got the fti in place um obviously the oil pans on it oil coolers back on and yeah i think that's about where we're at and all of that okay let's time lapse some stuff Now that we have the motor off the stand, we're gonna put the real cover on, flex plate, all that great stuff. Yeah. Back plate's on. Back plate. Now I gotta get my SFI. Oh, Mr. Fancy acronym guy. Here. I'm gonna take these, I know. 
go. For everybody wondering, look, SFI 29, was it 291? Oh, that, that is nice. Okay, flex plates on. Bolts all on. Are we ready to put this back in the car? Transmission is now bolted to the block. As you can see, the weight's still on there. Basically, you want to get the transmission mounted to the block, and then we'll get it on the motor stand. So that's what we're doing here. Maybe. That doesn't go there, does it? That one goes here. On today's episode of What Goes Where. No, that's not right. Oh, there it is. Imagine. You'd have been done already, right, Mike? No. Oh. No, Mike told me to get down here and do it or he was going to charge me even more. <laughs> <laughs> So fast forward now four days since the weekend since we started putting the motor back in the car. Uh, again, I am trying to just do one video because I don't like the multi-video stuff. I just don't. But we had put the block in the car, as you just saw, and um, ran into potential issues with the heads. And basically, we grabbed the heads off the car after I had cleaned them and everything and uh, did a leak test because we were like, man, we, got, we bought the heads used, we wanted to make sure everything was good to go. Um, after we did the leak test, we found out, I believe it was number seven, uh, wouldn't hold water. And so we're like, uh oh. So Mike took the heads back home, worked on them in the evening. I don't even know what day it was, but we found this issue. Now, what you're seeing there is a bent valve. So ever so slightly, I mean, that, it's not a crazy bent valve, but it's bent and you don't wanna run a car that has any sort of bent valve. That being stated, I did buy these used off someone with the expectation that they were in perfectly good working order, no issues. And so I reached out to this person and let them know what was going on. Um, they responded back with uh, complete disgust on their part. There's like, I swear, they came off my car. I have no idea how it happened. Um, he offered first and foremost to buy the heads back from me, uh, which is awesome. And then on top of that, I, I said, hey, look, we're gonna look into what needs to be fixed or if it's something more than just a slightly bent valve that needs to be replaced. So uh, we went through, we had it all checked. Um, basically, they were like, replace all the seals, the runners all look great, basically just replace that one valve and you should be good to go. Uh, everything else looks good, you don't need to do anything else, and with replacing that valve, it's going to seal up all nice and will work perfectly fine. All the other valves were perfectly fine. Now, in this set of heads, there's upgraded manly valves, which, as some of you guys out there know, are really expensive. Uh, so I was really nervous on how much that was going to cost. I found out, I reached out to uh, Frankenstein ED, who were the ones who uh, ported and assembled the heads. And um, JD over there, freaking man of awesomeness, basically was just like, yep, we got that valve. Um, you know, he kind of expressed the same concern. If he's like, if you want to send them in and check them out, we definitely can do that. Um, he's like, but it doesn't look like it's going to be anything serious. And I let him know what we checked out and had already checked out. And he's like, yeah, just get a new valve and make sure you have good seals and you're good to go. So he overnighted me the valve I need. <laughs> so thanks JD, obviously I paid for it. Um, but yeah, it was a quick fix. I let the guy who I bought the heads from know how much it cost. He instantly refunded me the difference, you know, of what I paid for. So huge shout out to all of that. Thank you, JD at Frankenstein AD for being flexible. I literally emailed him the night before and I had an email in my inbox before I even woke up, which is awesome. I guess it helps that he's in Texas. I think they're in Texas, but um, yeah. 
So I'm headed over to Mike's right now to drop this part off to get the heads complete, and then we can get back to the lethal garage and finish final assembly, which we will do with some fast motion. And then if there's things I would like to talk about, which there probably is, uh, I'll stop in between there. So let's go do that. So at this point, we have the new valve. Obviously these heads are used, so you can't just slam in a new valve. You wanna lap it just a little bit to make sure you have perfect seating. Uh, I'm assuming at the rate that everything looks, we don't have to do that much work on it. So Mike's just gonna check it, do just a little bit of lapping, and we should be good to go. Like, a, like a plunger? That's a cool little tool. Just a, applying very light pressure to no pressure, almost. Yeah. Just enough to get well, it to. As, you, as your hand rolls, you're naturally gonna push down. You're gonna push down. If you push too hard, it won't spin. So that's just it's kind of an art. And then I marked it up with the marker before we did that. So you're just watching to make sure that that is all concentric all the way around. You don't, want any, you don't want any light spots, you don't want anything weird. That should be a nice, even thing all the way around it. And then I marked this up with a marker beforehand. I know it's hard to tell. But you should get the same thing on the valve seat. Perfect wear on those marks. It should be the exact same mark that you have on here should be on there. If you're getting anything weird, that means you have something old or something's bent or... Good to know. No time lapse here, but a little bit of a motor update. We got the heads in place, the valve trains all together, valve covers, the plastic shielding. Um, yeah, fuel lines, injectors. Everything's back in. Headers are bolted on. Looking good, but overall, motor's coming along pretty good. What's next? Tacos. We're gonna get the supercharger back on tap. We're gonna get tacos, gonna get tacos huh? Mike is uh, messing around with the AC compressor down there. He Which forgot. He forgot the lower bolt. <laughs> should have been deleted. Uh, should have been deleted. Sorry, we got the inner chiller. We need the air conditioner. Nope. So if you guys didn't know, inner chiller from uh, FI inner chillers from Australia, the original inner chiller, it's like three times larger than all the American made ones. We have the Cordes tank up here for the extra flow. A lot of guys will put tanks in the trunk. I'm not opposed to that, but in this instance, we put it up front. I did paint, kind of. I did a really bad job, but that's no longer white. So I think that'll look better once we get the bumper on. Uh, but parts and pieces are disappearing off the garage floor and making their way into the engine bay. So we must be doing something right. Um, it's just the water pump and really the supercharger and some pulleys at this point. Dang! Maybe a fan. Mike's on fire. Oh yeah, we kind of need a, we kind of need the radiator fan. <laughs> We're good. I guess it's a radiator and a condenser fan. Now that we got the O2 sensors and all that stuff snapped in place, well snapped, screwed in place, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get an oil filter on. I am using my Wix oil filter and my Amsoil Z-Rod 10W30. Uh, if you guys didn't see how amazing my bearings looked, um, you can understand, well, look in the upper right hand corner for a video, but you'll understand why I like this oil. And to reiterate, the issues with my motor had nothing to do with the oil. It had everything to do with a failed tensioner. And uh, the metal was from the sprockets and the timing chain. So, lots of fun. So, people argue that you don't have to do this, or you do have to do this. I don't care. I put a little oil in the oil filter just to get rid of the air bubbles while it's out of the system. I'm sorry, uh, here I can uh, fix the camera so you can see me. So, and oil filters go on hand tight. Just make sure your hands aren't greasy when you're doing the hand tight. Good 
to go. Lethal's first oil fill. So just a quick review, we got spark plugs and wires. We went down underneath the car, got all the remaining plugs and everything, got oil in the car. Um, what else did we do? We got the last two trans bolts in. We put the rear or the bottom brace on. So you can see everything buttoned up down here. Uh, one thing that we still have to do is put the bolt in the steering column. Um, that's gonna be tough to get to, you gotta get there. But next up is dropping supercharger onto the vehicle, get the rest of the pulley systems in place, and start filling her up with more fluids. So, not a ton to do. I'd say maybe a couple hours worth of work, and hopefully we have a car that's ready to start. Uh, and the other thing is, is I'm gonna, I got my battery tender, so I'm gonna hook it up to the battery in the back, make sure it's fully charged and good to go, because uh, the car's been sitting for quite a while. This is crazy. Now what you do is you take your, assembly lube and you just take the cap off like this and you just give it a good squeeze <laughs> This is how you put an O-ring on a supercharger. So, fun part about the supercharger lid, you gotta put the O-ring back on. But, when you put the O-ring back on, it's usually a little bit stretched. So Mike was saying, you go around once, and then you have to go around again until the excess disappears. So, that's what we're doing right now. Dang it! We, we definitely got a lot to absorb into it, but not enough. <laughs> Dang it. Starting 2027. <laughs> Captain, we got it! Don't touch it, it's gonna pop out. Right here? Look, it wants to pop out right there. Yeah, right here. We got it. Like, I, made, I made two full circles. <laughs> Mike. Captain's log, day 87. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. <laughs> so, we got the seal on. Mike's walking over to go grab the uh, cover. Oh my god, this thing is dirty. Because <sighs> you touched it. Oh no! No! Captain's luck. Captain's luck. Stop. Oh, no. No. Stay, 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 stay. <laughs> Juice! <laughs> oh, it's starting to look like a car again. Well, I guess there's the kid, the blue. Yeah. Yeah. So my camera battery is dying. I hooked it back up for a couple minutes to try to get some of the last of this. I'm gonna go plug it back in before first fire so we can get that on camera. But um, right now it's got the three five. We had a three five and a nine one lower. We're gonna throw a three two five, but we have a three zero oh coming. And a so. two two five. No 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 two, no. Um, th the three zero oh that is coming will basically spin the Whipple with the nine one. I think at its max. Velocity, you're pretty dang close to it. The 2250 will. The 2250 will? Oh, yeah. So we're still safe at the. So what you're saying is we need to go to the 275? Safe. You said safe. I don't like that word. <laughs> the liar. <laughs> but supercharger's on. All sorts of goodness is happening here tonight. Uh, it's looking really good. Just getting the final touches. So I'm going to be back once we get the Rotofab Big Gulp back in place. Obviously the Nick Williams 103 is there. I'd love to get the new 122. Maybe maybe if I go, is it a 112? I thought it was 122. 112, sorry. I misspeaked, spoked, spoken. But um, yeah, 
Oh, we still have to connect the headers to the exhaust as well. Oh Open header light. You got a roll cage and a Kirky. Open header. Okay, battery's hooked up. Everything turned on. The battery is low still, didn't charge all day. Um, fluid in, Mike went to go top off his jug. So if we need to add more fluid in the radiator line, we'll be good. But we're ready for first start. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, we're open header right now. So the neighborhood's gonna hate life. First fire was good. Took her a little bit to get her primed and fired, but she fired. That's so awesome. Uh, one of the biggest reasons it kept doing that is all the lifters were collapsed. Oh, so they have to get in the right position? Well, they need to get oil in them so they get pumped up so they're holding the valves open. There was no fuel in anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we drained everything. A lot of stuff goes into that. Guys. The car's running, everything's back. Um, it's really now just buttoning up the last of the stuff. So as you guys know, still have to get the fender on, gotta get the bumper on. We still have to get all the bottom trays and everything buttoned up. And then we need to get the headers connected to the rest of the exhaust. Now, because Stainless Works uses slip fit everything, we wanted to make it easier to pull the exhaust or get to it. So we're actually installing some three inch um, large clamps and we're redoing it so we can quick disconnect the exhaust from the headers without having to pull the whole exhaust system which has been the bane of the existence of this car because of the rear diffuser I went with from GM because it closes out the bottom of the exhaust and it's dark so you probably can't see it but it closes out the bottom so you have to basically pull the whole exhaust back to get it to disconnect and then get it out and down it's not fun it's a pain, especially with full slip fit systems. So, but the car is up and running. We are good to go. Uh, I think this video is long enough at this point. So I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, motor's built, it runs. Uh, we definitely have to do some break-in miles and we'll be good to go. So this weekend I'll be doing a lot of driving around town. So if you're in the Temecula area and you hear lots of noise, it's probably me. Um, but yeah. The car's ready. We're, I don't know how many days before CamaroCon right now, 15 days out. So, I mean, it's not two days out, so we're better than last year. Perfect. Last year, we we literally put the hood on the car the night before and finished the tune that morning of the day before. So we're we're a little, a little more ahead of schedule. That's good. So the car will hopefully be good. Um, I don't know if we're gonna be able to get to a track before we get out to LVMS to really 
break her down and see what she can do. So we may be doing some test and tune runs at some point at LVMS before we even get to run the car. But we have to find a place to get my NHRA license before the event. So if I have to drive somewhere far, I'm gonna be doing that. Um, it's frustrating, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So that's all I got. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. As always, likes, comments, shares, appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Also, hit the homepage on Lethal Garage on YouTube if you enjoy this content. Hit that bell, 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 I can't talk, the bell, uh, to be the first to know when uh, new content goes live. So YouTube's been doing some crazy things with the algorithms, and uh, it is what it is. Oh, well. So until next time, guys, hope to see you on the road.